All right, Hi, people, it's your boy Chick from Unit Eagle Eye coming to you again with a brand new video. This time it is Eagle Eye, the Transfer Rumor Show. Oh, you thought this had stopped because the UK window shut. No, 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 my friend. We are still continuing this on, until the 2nd of November. Uh, because Lord knows we need to offload some motherfuckers. So we are going to continue this train rolling. I've slapped off for a while. We're coming back for the next couple of weeks at the very least. So good evening, Ryan. Good evening, uh, Jack. Uh, and let's get this train rolling. So, um, yeah, through to Arsenal, the Eagle Eye Transfer Rumors show where I talk to you about rumors surrounding the Arsenal. Uh, let's get this off and popping. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'm, it's a lot has happened in the last like, day or so, uh, particularly with... Um, <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate the love, brother. Uh, yes, um, particularly with Josh Conke. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I'm impressed with this guy. I'm starting to be impressed. I, I like the swagger he's coming on. I, I know Americans have this tendency, no offense to them, the American fans that are watching. It's actually a compliment. They like this, they like they have a tendency to go big with, with their statements. Um, and I think sometimes you do need to, particularly in a situation like ours, read between the lines of certain things, even when they, they promise big, actually try and understand what it is that they are trying to say. Um, but in terms of this situation, um, I liked what he was coming out with. They weren't just outlandish, they weren't Mike Ashley comments, for the want of a better word, right? You know, I think we saw a guy who, as I, as I said, when I when he initially had news of those protests coming through, and I remember doing, if you doubt me, go check out those videos. It's in the Eagle Life playlist. Um, I can't even remember what episode it was. And I remember commenting on that and saying, that looks like a guy who was almost taken aback by the fact that Arsenal fans were so agitated by the lack of transfer activity. It almost looked like someone who had been like, well, if you see what we're working on, trust me, none of you guys would be bitching. Like, I feel like somewhere along the line, in spite of what they say, the penny has dropped. And it could be the fact that they've now acquired the whole club that that club is now under concrete ownership. Whether some people like it or whether some people don't. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of the owner. But more than anything, what I want is someone who's active, someone who's present. You don't even necessarily need to live in, live in this country. Just be active and present, you know? Don't, do you think the Sheikhs live in Manchester? No, they do not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They don't live in Manchester. You know, the Glazers don't live in Manchester, right? I know United fans hate the Glazers. Maybe that's not a great example. But these owners are active for their clubs. This is why the, the, the United thing baffles me. It's like the amount of money that these fools have spent on you guys, and you guys are still bitching, right? Now, I know there'll probably be some United fan that will be watching this and think, you don't even understand, Chief. Focus on your own club. Let's do it. All right, then let me focus on my club. I want our owner to be active. He doesn't necessarily need to be in this country. He doesn't even just need to be in the transfer window. I want you to be affecting change. Because ultimately, what we all want as Arsenal fans is for them to be winning. Why is it that we're entering a game against Liverpool? Don't get me wrong, Liverpool historically are a big team. They're a bigger club than us. I will grant you. But why, why are we worried that we're going into a Liverpool game and all of us are with trepidation or like, well, well, you know, if we take a 2-1 loss, that would be satisfying. You mean the same club that ain't won the league? In, how, long, how long has it been? I think they've not even won the Premier League before. Last time, excuse me, the, the last time... Uh, the league uh, was in was active, but they won. It won the Premier League. It was Division One. You mean this is the same club that we're worried about? 
But this is the situation that we're in. I don't, me personally, you guys, it matters to you guys more than it does me. But, you, you know, I know there's a it's, a it's a thing where pundits don't pick Arsenal to do anything. You know, you can barely pick a pundit for Arsenal to make the top four. Barely. I saw Jamie Carragher picked us the other day, but Gary Neville didn't. Right? Which worries me a little bit because Jamie Carragher tends to get most things wrong. <laughs> so I was like, oh shit, I don't want to see that. It bothers you guys more than it. I, I could care less if Michael Owen doesn't think we'll make top four. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? But from our, our perspective, I want to see my club being successful. I want to see us reaching for the stars. I want to see us do better. I want things put in place. Not just spending money aimlessly and not achieving shit like a Fulham or like Villa look like they're going down that route now. I want us to be logical in what we spend and have some sort of plan. So I watched the Joss Conkate interview. Oh, sorry, I said I watched it. I read it. And um, I ain't going to lie to you. I liked everything I heard. I liked the fact that the man is talking about winning the Premier League. We're almost treating it like it's a dirty word or a dirty sentence. Winning the freaking Premier League. Yes. That's what I want to hear from, from my owner. But I also want to hear, how do you plan to do that? He talks about the fact that he wants to be more ruthless with players and not just leave average to dead out players to rot in the club, collecting paycheck after paycheck. Nothing irritates Arsenal fans more. Listen, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, but the idea that Carl Jenkinson has stayed here about five years longer than he should have pisses me off. You know? That Mohamed Al Nene has stayed here past his sell by day pisses me off. You know? Must, listen, Mustafi, it's well documented that for three years I thought this man is shit. I I don't think he should necessarily be the symbol of everything that shit. But it's well documented that I feel shit. And I will come to him shortly. But it, again, it pisses me off to see that someone like that has been here. It's like you told you tried, so you tried to sell him every single year that he's been here. And you haven't done that. Why? Is it because you're asking for dumb money? So, it, to me, I wanted to see things that encouraged me about his plans. So he said that, that, and part of me believes him, you know. I, I don't think it's necessary as clean cut as he's making out, but part of me believes it, that it wasn't so much the protest that forced him into action. And, and I agree with that. I, I, I don't think necessarily, particularly at that stage of the season, the protest, the protest certainly got his attention. But it, I, I don't think it necessarily pushed him into action. But what I think happened was that he would have saw how embarrassing that final was. The fact that we let a team, a one-man team that were falling out the day before with an outgoing manager smack us up in the final is embarrassing. And as an owner of that team, or, or as the part of the family that owns that team, that's got to be embarrassing. You bought all your people... Listen, from a, forget us for a second. If you are just Cronkay, right? You're bragging and boasting to your friends that one of my sports teams has just got themselves into a major cup final, right? A European Cup final that's in Baku, right? <laughs> Let, stay with me a second, right? You're trying to sell this idea of Baku. It's an exotic place and, you know, Arsenal are there and they're so good. They got to the final with ease and you watch, they're going to take out Chelsea, no problem. London rivals, we've got a really good record against Chelsea, Come the damn game, we get absolutely bitch slapped in front of the whole world. It's not a good look for your investment. So, at some point, you have to say to yourself, all right, this self sustaining thing is all good, but if we can't get back into the Champions League, we can't do the self sustaining thing. 
We can't do self-sustaining thing on Euro on Europa League money. We can't do it. So it's logical that you say to yourself, all right, and this is this was my entire complaint with the Cronkays in the first place. Just go out there and spend dough. What you do is you spend dough, you make that investment at least initially. Get us back into the damn Champions League and take your fucking dough back. Isn't that what most people do with investments? You spend a little to get back that dough. That was my entire complaint with this down. With, with this, with this, I won't call them down because they spend the, they spend the money now. That was my entire complaint with this family in the first place. And I feel like somehow that penny is now dropped, where they said, "All right, what we need to do is yes, we need to be efficient because there's no getting around financial fair play either way. But what we also need to do is say to ourselves, right." Let's be more efficient with money that we do spend. So don't just spend aimlessly. Don't just spend in big lump sums. Spend over a period of time, but also spend on the correct targets. You like you don't spend 70 plus million on Wilfred Zaha. I'm sorry. I know people still want him. I, I still think that was a fucking smokescreen for their eventual target, which was um, which was um my gosh, salt and pepper. I don't know. Why did I forget our player's name? <laughs> that was a smoke. Imagine if everyone knew that Arsenal were in for him. Bro, people would have people would have jumped on board. We would have got outbid and it would have been a wrap. But as it stood, I know they say Liverpool was interested. I, I think Liverpool was semi-interested. Liverpool was semi-interested. I mean United were more interested than people have you believe. And I think. Clearly, Napoli were interested because they were the other ones that bit. And we, the little Europa League club, were the ones that beat everybody out. Showing that maybe Arsenal still have a little bit of draw, have a little bit of cachet. Um, and, you know, I, I love what I heard from Pepe today. I, I'm not sure entirely by it, but I love what I heard from Pepe saying that, you know, Arsenal, for him, was the logical choice because they showed that they were ambitious um, by going for him in the first place and that, you know, he wants to win the Europa League, so do they. Uh, he wants to be back in the Champions League, so do Arsenal. Um, he wants to win the Premier League, so do Arsenal. So these were the sort of things that um, has come out from an interview in France, which, or, or sorry, in a French paper, which Pepe gave today. Um, so I like what I'm hearing, you know, and then there's other parts of good news. At the moment, Arsenal are in deep talks with Lacazette and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Apparently the report I heard over the, about three, four weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, two weeks ago, when, uh, two, three weeks ago, when the window shut about, uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang actually signing new deals. No, it turns out they're actually in deep talks for new deals. Uh, both guys have been offered deals, not necessarily on Meza Ozil money, but they are set to get a pay rise and a lot of bonuses that could be on the level of a Meza Ozil. So Meza Ozil is a basic wage. Yes, he does have image bonuses and shit like that, but predominantly most of his money comes from 350 a week. The 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 deals which Arsenal are putting together for Lacazette and for um, Aubameyang are set to be, I think Lacazette's deal is, is, is they're building a new four-year deal. And I think with Aubameyang, it's a new three-year deal. Uh, uh, both with all the add-ons and little bits and bobs are set to be in the region of about £300,000 a week. In those cases, they absolutely fucking deserve it. So I'm happy. And, you know, I think his plan, he's come out today and he said that his plan is that he wants to make sure that the important players are tied down to new deals. Um, the players that are seen as uh, dead weights, they're moved on as quickly as possible. Uh, and he wants to win the Premier League title and he wants to be able to give Unite Emery enough support 
to be able to allow him to win the Premier League title. That he was just as embarrassed as, as us uh, in that final and that him and Raul, Don Raul, had a discussion on the flight home from Baku. And they, he basically just said to Raul, listen, whatever you need, just go out there and be aggressive. Don't, don't, don't watch face. You want someone, go get them. You tell me how much it costs, we'll back it. That's what I want to fucking hear, man. That's what I want to hear. That's all I've asked for. I don't, I don't want no 500 million spent. I don't want no 400 million spent. Just go out there, go for your targets, go for quality targets, and then pay the dough. Don't stop messing around with 40 million plus one pound. Look at that bullshit. Just go out there and be aggressive and get your player. And that's what I loved. That's what I enjoyed so much. Sorry, that's what I enjoyed. I just realized you guys might not be able to hear me properly. That's what I enjoyed so much about reading this interview. I ain't going to lie. Let me see if I can try and find a quote. I'm just trying to get it up and see. So he basically said, as the second half of the uh, match folded, this is in Baku, we were in a position where, sorry, let's, we were in a position where some of the targets, okay, I'm reading this quote. I'm guessing it's the match anyway. Uh, speakers of people sports about the prospect for the campaign. As the second half of the match unfolded, understanding the position that we're in and some of the targets um, as we headed into the summer from a transfer standpoint, we had to rethink some of our strategy based on the last 45 minutes. So that goes to show you that they had an idea going into that final of what they needed. As, to be perfectly frank, any club would as you wind down the season. But that match was so bad <laughs> that he was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. We might need a few defenders, a left back. We did need a right back, but let's not be too greedy here. We can only do so much in a window. Believe me, I'm not shitting on it, right? So the fact that the, <laughs> the second half was so poor, how bad of a second half must you have in a game? For the owner to be like, hold up. Yeah, we need to change all of our fucking plans based on this match that we're currently playing out. Mind you, we as Arsenal fans, we watch this shit weekly. We know what the problems are. But you know what? In a way, I'm glad. I'm, I'm a glad because it's a blessing. It's a blessing because we were able to show whatever happened in that final. Yes, I would have preferred to have won it. Of course, I would have preferred to have won it. I always want Arsenal to win games. But what that match did is it clearly opened these families' eyes and said, listen, we can't we can't do this tippy-tappy, petty-pinching shit. We need to go out there and be aggressive and get the transfer targets that we need. Um, you're right, Alex. I hope you're good, brother. I'll come to the chat in a minute. I'll come to the chat. It's been a while since I've done one of these bit rusty and come back in there. Uh, so he basically said that he called on directors to reinvigorate the Premier League side. That's the shit I want to hear. Reinvigorate the side and be, be, be present, be front and center. And then it was, and then he says, speaking on the aftermath of the Europa League final, uh, we knew that we have, that we wouldn't have Champions League football. And that's, and that what those type of talents are after. My main message to Vinay and to Raul, coming back from Baku on the plane, as I said, and meetings all day to following them and Unite Emre was, let's be aggressive, let's find out what's possible. These guys went into the transfer marketplace and through their contacts and our fantastic new team behind the scenes, we were able to find some talented players who are really excited about playing for Arsenal Football Club. I think we had a very strong summer, which credit to the Cronkays, we did. We did. We addressed certain areas for the pitch this season. And in the years ahead, we had a certain age profiles that we were after, which if you notice, a lot of teams are doing. 
Man United is an excellent example of that. I, one of my comments about United was all of a sudden they seem like quite an old team. And if you notice, slowly but surely, all right, people laugh at McTominay. He's a hard-working midfielder, you know? And, you know, they're starting to slowly replace your your Matiches and your uh, one matters. And they're bringing in, I, I don't rate him, but they're bringing in Jesse Lingard. They're bringing in uh, McTominay. And they're just slowly tweaking shit. City have been about that youngster life. Look at their team. They've been about that youngster life. And Liverpool, they, they, they're they clever, Liverpool, because they use their older people the way you should in a situation like that. They, they bring in their older vet guys when they need to just drag a couple of people through the line or, 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 or Liverpool have a bit of a gritty game and they need that bit of experience. Then they start drafting in your Milners and, and, and people like that and, and drafting them and your Hendersons and people like that. And then immediately it will come to more of an energetic game. They remove these fucks. This is just the way modern football is going. And if you notice that Barcelona started to bring in youngsters, that's one of the things I think Real Madrid suffers from, that they don't have enough young guys in their team. Uh, that's just the way modern football is going. So it's not it's not surprising that that seems to be the strategy now from Raul, Vinay, and and, um, and, and Josh. Um, he says, I th- uh, this summer, even though we weren't in a position of strength coming out of Baku, I think there were a few people that were caught off guard that the Arsenal still had that aura that it does. And we were excited to keep pushing that now into the future. Um, And that's the thing, because I love it because all the press were embarrassed. They were sticking with this Arsenal have only 45 million shit. And it suited Arsenal for them to think that. It suited Arsenal to think that. It didn't suit us as fans, but then we don't need to know this shit, really. Even I must admit, we don't really need to know this shit. I just need to. I just need you to get on with it. Get on and secure these title, secure these these targets. We don't really need to know how much money you have. Just go out there and get it done. That's my only thing. Um. Um. When asked whether Arsenal adhered to the self-sustaining model or if finances were injected by the owners, um, of whom Josh. Cronke is the deputy chairman to his father's Stan's company. The 39-year-old said, I'm not going to go into too much detail. That's because dough was put in. People can read between the lines of being aggressive, and that's what the that's what that might mean. That is all I asked for in the summer. J- just a balance. Self-sustaining is great. I do it. I know this is going to be a stupid example to people, but whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say it. I am all about that self-sustaining life whenever I play football manager. If I notice I spent a lot, I try and recoup that shit back. I'm all about that. My whole thing is spend it first now and then try and recoup that shit later. That's my only thing. Um... Uh, it's going to be a private matter for us here at the club, but I hope our fans understand that by being aggressive, that's exactly what we were. Going into the summer, we knew we were going to have instruments in place that were going to allow us to be aggressive and they weren't going to be dependent on sales. Uh, the guys went out and worked their magic and I'm happy to have them Excuse me, on our side. Kronke said of the press, the fans' protests, but that was not the reason they spent more than 100 million on tr- on players, which I'm so happy to hear. Um, I would say that if you are reacting, if you are reacting and doing club signings based on public opinion, you're not going to go very far as a club. Which, to be fair, I 100% agree, because all of us are fucking experts. Until, but but ultimately. They are the decision makers. I'd like to think that they know what's best. It's just that the reason that we bitch and the reason that we feel like this is because as a fan base, we waited so long for the club to act like this. We were promised long ago that the club would act like this, and it's never happened. So this is the one time, 
the one time that we've acted like this and acted like a proper club, a club that wants to fight to get into that Champions League. This is this is the thing, and this is why I I go insane with Arsenal sometimes. Look at Man City, right? These motherfuckers won won the Premier League, and they've done so the last few years, right? Because it got as close as it did, they forfeit this and, and still strengthen their team by buying two players. Arsenal will finish something like sixth. And still think, oh well, uh, 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 look, uh, 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 you you look at me, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I I I have put in the, uh, those players, and then you bring in this poor man as a as a manager, and then you don't back him. Fuck that! Now they backed him, and now Emre, quite honestly, has nothing to hide behind now. He has to go out there and he has to produce. I don't want to hear this shit. And I saw this quote from him the other day about, oh, well, uh, um, uh, let, let me explain. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think I can. Uh, 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 I don't know if they're, if they're any better. Bullshit. They are a better team. So, Bios, I said it from the get-go, guys. And I'll say it again. I know people are trying to downplay it. And I agree not to get guessed. He's a better player than Aaron Ramsey. Full fucking stop. I know people are, are romanticized to the idea of Aaron Ramsey. I'm sorry. Your boy Sabayas is a better player. Nicholas Pepe is a better player than Alex Awobi. This is coming from me. He's a much better player than Alex Awobi. Uh, it's not even a discussion. That's another improvement. In my view, as much as I have a lot of... I'm not as gassed on David Luiz as some of you lot are. He's a better player than a broken 34-year-old Lauren Koscielny. Let's be fucking real here. The team is stronger. It's stronger. But we have to go out there and prove it. Um, Talking about fan pressure... Um, Cronkett, uh, I would say uh, it was unfortunate that the summer unfolded publicly the way it did with some of the support groups. I tried to answer some of the concerns to the best of our ability. The transfer market is evolving, living, breathing thing. We identified key targets, worked on those details, and over time tried to execute them. That's hopefully a sign of encouragement for Arsenal fans that we're thinking out in the marketplace. You might, uh, you might never know what we're thinking, but you could be surprised by some of the names that have come up. As for January, moving on, this is where I really dialed in. As for January, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so trying to manage expectations, but we've got to evaluate some of the things in the short term and figure out what we might need to address going forward. So when January does work roll around, we are proactive again, which to me makes fucking sense. What you want to do is you don't want to say one way or another. Like we heard so many times under the previous regime, well, I don't like to strengthen in January, no matter how shit the team is performing, then lo and behold, it comes December, everyone's depressed as fuck, and that doesn't help the players. To me, that makes so much sense to say, listen, I'm not promising that we're going to spend 100 million again in January. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is that we need to really take it game by game, assess where we are as we head into the January window, identify who might drag us over the line to ensure that this year we make Champions League football at a minimum. And then come January opens, we're aggressive again. That to me... This is not fucking complicated shit. This is ABC shit. Unfortunately, our, our club is so behind. It, we're marveling at just, a, a kid being able to walk. <laughs> this is basically what's happening here. Because we, we've, been, we're, we've been so left behind in the process of securing transfer targets that we're marveling at, at, at just normal things. This is what I would expect a football owner to say. Um, when asked what uh, his father's reaction had been to 
had been. Kronke added, he is thrilled. We've had the chance to sign, to get to know some of the new faces more. And behind the scenes, he's had a chance to be around them individually. He's excited. I can't imagine that man being ever excited. But anyway, uh, the hard part is staying patient, understanding that we're putting plans in place and that they're going to unfold over the next several years. We've done it with our North American teams and we're trying to implement those types of people and decision makers here at Arsenal. I think this summer is going to be a great example of the quality of people we have. And obviously, I imagine Edu and people like that will be, um, um, will be on it. Now, he did comment and praise you know, Emre a lot and talking about the sort of manager he is. I'm not going to go into that now because, like I said, this is a long interview. But I'm going to talk more about the fact that he wants to win the Premier League. So Cronkay said that um, our ambitions are as the same as the fans. Are they, though? Apparently, his ambitions is the same as the fans. We want to win, and we want to win as much as often, so as much and as often as possible, and doing it in a fun way where they are seeing some really entertaining football as well. I think we've got the group to do it. We have the highest of ambitions in North America, and we're trying to win. The Rams, which is my boys' team, shout out to Kenzo if he's in the chat, uh, we were in the Super Bowl last year, and I can only imagine what a Champions League final is like after being in Baku. So that's good. That's what I want to hear. Talk of the Champions League final. Why the fuck are Tottenham in a Champions League final and we can't, we dare not think about being in a Champions League final next season? Let's aim for that shit. I know as, as ridiculous as that sounds right now, if you if you told me last season Spurs would be in a Champions League, I would have laughed in your face. And they were. Uh, there are six great clubs in the Premier League and unfortunately only four club spots are, are guaranteed. The economics involved to be able to reinvest back into the club, attract different players who only want Champions League football. Our goal is to get back and win the Premier League. That's what I want to fucking hear. So you talk more about the fact that this is a long-term investment for them. Um, and it's important for them to know how passionate they are. And you do more stuff like this summer, people believe it. People believe it. You shut me up. You shut me up. I just want to see that continue, though. That doesn't mean 100, 100 million every window. That means you have an ambition of getting back into the Champions League, but then you're giving the manager no tools to be able to achieve that. I'm going to put this down to, so me and the Kronke now officially have a clean slate. Clean slate. Fuck whatever the fuck I said in the past. We have a clean slate. I believe we've got all the poisonous people out of the club that we needed to. Right? We now have a fucking clean slate. That means going forward, it's all on you now. You've got 100% control of this club. It's all on you. If we get back in the Champions League, it's determined by your decisions. Emre's as well, but ultimately your decisions. Clean slate, no problem. And I'm, and I'm happy. I'm happy as an Arsenal fan, and I make all this big rant because people keep asking me, what do I think about this rant, Kronko? What do I think about that? Hopefully, this whole fucking thing has covered it. I'm happy, and I'm even happier to learn that we are actively actively trying to shift Squadra and Mustafi. The latest story being that Roma are interested. Roma seem to be the club that are showing the most consistent interest. The thing that worried me, though, was about an hour ago, Mustafi's agent and his father came out and basically said that he knows no nothing about any Roma interest, which made me think, oh, fuck. And that's the, and that's the team that's most likely to get him. <laughs> now, that could that could just be because they haven't made an offer yet, but the belief is that they are going to try to. They obviously lost their um, defender, I've forgotten the name of now, the Greek guy, I've forgotten the name of him now. They lost him over the summer. They've been actively trying to get Lovran, Dijan Lovran from Liverpool. Well, um, no offence to Roma, why would you leave Liverpool for... 
Roma, and I get it. He doesn't play. I think he's behind Gomez and, and Van Dijk. But I, I can understand why Lovren might be reluctant to leave at this point. They just won the Champions League, for fuck's sake. Um, so, I, they've obviously just thought, all right, cool, we'll have Mustafi. <laughs> Apparently, the stumbling block with a lot of these clubs. Now, there are a lot of clubs that have inquired about Mustafi, as unbelievable as that is. It really is true. Um, the stumbling block, I, I always thought was price. Actually, it isn't. It's the obligation to buy. Well, what do you mean? You just spoke about price. Well, I thought it was a case of Arsenal were pricing everyone out. And we want apparently 25 million euros for him, which is about a little over 21, 22 million pounds. If we get if we get 20, I'd be happy, FYI. Um, now, the thought process is that Arsenal want an obligation to buy. Under fucking standpoint. <laughs> they won't be left with this done when he proves to be shit, right? Um, <laughs> but people are like, no, 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 no. I ain't doing that obligation to buy shit. I want an option to buy if he turns out to be good. So, unless we can fool anyone within the next couple of days, I think this one is going to run and run to the 2nd of September, personally. Um, but I think it's clearly been made clear to Mustafi now. He has no future at the club. Um, and I fully expect him to leave before uh, September 2nd. And um, good for him. You know, listen, forget my beefs with him over the past. You guys know... I've been calling Mustafi out for three years. I've never been convinced. Never. I don't care. I know people got... The way people are getting gassed over David Luiz now, people uh, got gassed about his run, his undefeated run. And I was like, all right, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. And then PSG away came. And I was like, I knew it. It's fucking shit. I knew it. And I just saw this guy getting the run around. But... He's also young, and the Arsenal Arsenal fans are crazy. And I put that in brackets because, for me, when you start abusing people online and threatening their family because they're not good enough, I'm I'm sorry. That's a that's a different level of some bullshit that I don't that I don't subscribe to. Because someone has a shit game, you're going to start abusing them and threatening their family. Oh, that's really meant to inspire them. I, I don't subscribe to that. So, for me, I'm glad he's leaving. I wish him all the best. I honestly do. I honestly do. And uh, I hope, quite honestly, all parties are happy. Um, just got to get Roman to officially make an offer first because apparently his dad doesn't know shit about it. So, we'll see what happens. Um, final story I'm going to go on to is we are interested. I'm going to get back to that. Fucking story now. Hold on. We are interested in the 16-year-old Rens player. I did see that story a second ago. Bet me. Do you make sure you stick a like. All right. Do make sure you I thought I saw another story there. Um, do make sure you stick a like on this video. Crush the like button. It helps people notice the shit. So make sure you do stick a like on the video. Uh, bear with me. I am just going to find that story. Sorry, I really should have had this prepared. Could tell I'm real rusty with this. Um... People are still linking Zaha with Arsenal. No chance, son. No chance. I, I don't think that's happening. Um... Oh, yeah. Let me talk about the Torreira story. Because people did ask me about the Torreira story. Um, supposedly, Torreira was very close. He wasn't going to force his way out of Arsenal and Torreira. And um, he was open to the idea of uh, going. Um, but ultimately, Arsenal wasn't happy with that. And he says going to everything possible can to Arsenal. Um, 
So yeah, that one. I suppose I don't. I don't. I don't think we really. Because I think a lot of people just assume that the stories were bullshit. In fact, I remember a lot of you guys were saying, "Yeah, it's bullshit." Chick, I don't, I'm surprised you even reported it. Uh, this, that, and the other. It, it was always. It was always bullshit. Nah, it won. It was actually true. It's just. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find a story about the 16 year old. Yeah, it's just um, unfortunately. I found it now. Unfortunately, um, those stories just, yeah. It, I say unfortunately. I'm glad we kept him. Don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, I, I guess we just didn't realize how close he was to the exit door. Right. Final story before I go into the chat room. Please do stick a like on this video. And let's go into the chat room. So Arsenal are scouting the camera replaced. Um, uh, what's his name? Unless he's still there, um, I assume he's left or leaving. Oh, uh, what's his name? Saar. Uh, PSG. By the way, most of these big teams that played over the past weekend, their first game, they seem to have lost it or, or dropped points. Uh, but yeah, in the performance against PSG, which Renz won, um, Kamavinga. Um, was basically the star of the night. Basically showed a bag of pace, uh, good hustling, a uh, lot of French nationality, which would obviously make you know, knows what going on, constructed intellectually, knows how to question the uh, Arsenal are interested in him. Um, even PSG are apparently interested in him. I didn't watch the game, I mean, it just did. But when I was watching the team, uh, the team set up because I like keeping an eye on the French league because I think the French league is a good feeder league for the Premier League. I really believe that. Um, so I like keeping an eye on just French talents. I must admit, I saw the name. I didn't really think anything of it. So I'm only going to be on until 35, 9.35. But I'm going to go into the chat now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm still lagging. I'm going to the chat and see what you lot are saying. Uh, buffering, Chig. Really? I might actually buffering. Fucking hell. All right. Like I said, put up with it today. Put up with it today. Put up with it this week. Next week, I will put a new PC on here. Just put up with it this week, this buffering shit. And I will also look into my internet and check it's rolling all right. Uh, what was better than a Wobi? Uh, was he now? Okay. <laughs> Walcott had better numbers. I'll give you that. I will give you that. But the way you lost shit on a Wobi, uh, Walcott, bear in mind, Walcott left him was 28. Well, Obi's leaving at 23. Trust me, he'll be fine. Uh, El Nene does need to leave. I think El Nene will leave. I think the two most likely departures is El Nene and Mustafi. I hope Mkhitaryan leaves, but I think the manager sadly rates him. When do you make previews for Saturday's game? Uh, so, funny enough, I'm going to make a preview with Robbie Richmond. Robbie Richmond makes his return to the channel. Uh, that will be on Thursday. I've also got a little something extra. Uh, a certain Pastor Chig, I hear, wants to make an appearance. I don't know. So, that will be on uh, Friday. Um, so, yeah, you'll have almost two previews. Lagging as hell, mate. Really? Fucking hell. All right. Well, you can hear me, right? Top man. Great content as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Appreciate it. And also, thank you, um, Rabadan. I see your preview. Um, your preview. My, your your uh, donation. Thank you, mate. 
The lag is hurting my eyes. You're lagging, mate. Ch okay, about 18 people have told me I'm lagging. I hear you. There's not much I could do about it. I have no idea what's happening or why it's lagging. Yeah, yeah. So, Pastor Cheek, well, if it's lagging, try refreshing. Yes, please. Do, tr do try refreshing. It's something I'll look into because I have no idea why it's lagging. It shouldn't be. I've got, I pay for pretty expensive internet. <laughs> so, it shouldn't be the internet. So I I suspect it might be the the uh, computer itself, so I'll, I'll have a look into finding out what that's about. Just bear with me; I have a plan. It's good now. It's good now. Uh, any questions before I go? Literally five more minutes, and I'm out. There is no overtime fund for me to continue overtimes. If I missed any donations earlier, apologies. I wanted to concentrate on getting my Joth Conke um, quotes correct. I, I think I begs on all the criticism I've given him and that family um, over the years. I wanted to make sure that I got what I said accurately over. So, yeah. Thoughts on uh, Pogba being abused is bullshit. Anytime a player is abused is bullshit. And in Pogba's case, I really don't fucking get it because... As far as I can... Yeah, he's a fucking diva. Listen, every team has at least one or two divas. Um, but he's performed reasonably well. There have been a lot worse players than Paul Pogba. But he gets it because he is a World Cup winner. He is the most expensive player in that team. Still probably the most expensive player in that team. Probably played the most. So that's why he gets that abuse. It shouldn't justify it. And it doesn't make it okay, but that is the fact. Uh, did I watch Terry from Football Terrace called Pepe a flop at a French Walcott? Um, sounds like salt to me. I, I, <laughs> does it? I mean, I don't even understand why it surprises you. Why does it surprise you? I only Terry is a United fan. I only ever hear United fans talking shit, and that feels like salt to me. That's all it is. It's, it's mainly United fans talking shit, you know. And no offense, Terry often tends to get things wrong, so I'm I'm not I I'm not sweating it. You guys shouldn't either. I don't even have beef with the kid, but I'm just being real. Uh, pop a bit of his now. Would you be mad if Emre started Mickey against Liverpool? Yes, yes, fucking yes, 100%. Yes, Ozil and Mickey should not be starting against Liverpool. Spoiler alert for my preview to, uh, on Thursday they ain't getting in my team. No, we need 10, we need 11 men battling against these guys because we need to be at our best. And then some, just to get a positive result out of Liverpool. So, 100%. Mickey, no. No, 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 no. No. Do you think that Monreal and Enzi Maitland-Niles can cope with Liverpool at the weekend? Um, potentially, but I think they've got to focus on defending. As dumb as this is going to sound... Monreal doesn't have the legs to be going up and down. And Kolasinac don't have the sense to defend properly. Although, to be fair to Kolasinac, at home against Liverpool, I thought he did really well. Really well. Was one of the best players on the pitch. I remember that last year. A away from home? Mm -mm. So, I think, potentially, but they've just got... And this is why there's a real valid argument of playing three at the back. Because if you play three at the back and you play Monreal the left side of those three, maybe it might be worth the move. Just putting it out there, putting options out there, mixing it up, trying to keep you guys guessing in terms of what I'm going to do. Um, I'll give you guys five more minutes. Five more minutes. It's been a while. It's been a while. Five more minutes. Overtime fund. Uh, presence blood. <laughs> 
And then they, Emre always starts Mickey in a way it goes. Uh, Torreira needs to start. I don't think Emre fancies Torreira. I, I really don't. Terry's a tit, a proper soul. So, you know, it's, it's United. United. United fans are real salty about the Pepe thing. Because if you noticed, up until maybe two weeks before we signed Pepe, United were the ones that were properly chasing him. The the, the Pepe rumours were, initially it was Liverpool. And I'm going to get at Robbie. Because Liverpool, Robbie went out of his way to find some article from one Africa dude. and Because apparently he predicted the, I think it was the, wow. It was a Salah move, I think he predicted. I don't know. He predicted one something. And then the same guy also predicted that Pepe would join Liverpool. And then after a couple of weeks, I never heard a story about Pepe at Liverpool. I thought, okay, cool. What's going on then? And then United, the last couple of weeks before we signed him, were heavily linked with him. And then nothing happened. I thought, okay. Okay. And then when Arsenal were linked with him, I thought, fuck off. <laughs> oh, still gassed. I ain't gonna lie, I'm still gassed. I don't care if he hasn't scored yet. I'm still gassed. Um, Rabbit Down with a donation again. Thank you, brother. Uh, so much to banter, so much banter. United guys without for without racism. Mm, I, I have heard people say it's racism. I'm not gonna be that guy, but because I don't like playing the race card so easily, because I think there is more important things that you you should call out racism for than just call it out willy nilly. So if you notice, I don't really go. It's not my go to. Um, you know, I don't like saying that frivolous, frivolous, frivolously. There you go. Uh, Arsenal fans need to turn. Arsenal players need to turn super slaying at Anfield. Any chance of a watch along for Friday, Everton versus Villa game? Um, Prince, I love you, brother. There is a very little chance of that. I'm saying that. Ask Lee. Ask Lee. I tend to do the watch alongs on Lee's channel. Ask Lee. I, I won't be doing one. But I might I might jump on Lee's if, if I'm not doing anything on Friday. If. Uh, VR is good, but still needs refining. Yes, it does have. You're lagging, chick. Who's chick, Emmanuel? Yo, chick, just seeing you, yo. Apparently, I'm lagging because I keep getting told that every two seconds. So, apologies. Uh, what have I missed? Do you think Pepe will be match fit? Chick, no lie, I'd give Louise the armband right now. Okay. So this is the other thing that people are being gassed about. I ain't gonna lie to you, right? So I thought Pep, I thought Louise largely had a good game. I, didn't, I weren't blown away by him. He largely had a good game. This idea that he should be captain, though, no. Yes, I think he's shown some good leadership qualities at the back, but I'm not gonna start bum sucking this guy after one game. All right. Yeah, it's one game. It's one game. And you, you want to give him the captain's armband? Like, relax, people. Let, let's see how it goes. To me, I'm just glad that we got someone who has some leadership skills. I still don't think he's a great defender. And you know Chig knows defenders. So I know this ain't going to be a popular thing to say, but it's also going to be the truth. That's what you get from me. I don't necessarily think he's the best defender. And I think at some point in the season, he's going to prove this. You're going to come back to this video and be like, oh, shit, Chick really does know defenders. This is not a positive one that I'm predicting, though. And I hope I'm wrong in a lot of ways. But what I'm hoping out of Louise, at the very least, if it's just a two-year stint he has, he concentrates and gives the best he possibly can for the club. I would not like to see Louise in a back four against Liverpool. You are going to see Pace is going to badly expose him. And I think the best way of protecting him is in a back five. If you're going to play him, 
that's what he should be playing. Having said all of that, I'm going to save my comments for Thursday. I'm just saying I'm not as gassed about David Luiz as the way you lot are. I think he's had a good start, but I'm also expecting a calamity at some point. So I say, let's everybody fucking calm down. And you know what? Even I was gassed about Sabios, the Sabios thing as well. Everybody just be easy. There's nothing wrong with being happy. Let's just see how this shit plays out. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the promise, RT, was for... Huh. That's the name of my girl's friend. Uh, the promise, RT, was... Um, um, for from Josh to be aggressive in January. That was the promise. Uh, what have I missed? A big Cronke uh, diatribe, uh, Darkest. Pepe should be fit for Liverpool game. Hopefully. Who would I make captain? Lacazette. 100%. I, I don't even understand why it's not happened yet. Uh... Peter here from America, old porn star, awesome stream. <laughs> well, well, I hope you enjoy, my man. I hope you enjoy. If he's shit, then holding would replace him. Uh, well, let's see. There's a lot to put on holding. It's been out for a long time. I I disagree with you on. I actually think. Five at the back would help with defending that threat. I don't want a a, a, um, a Monreal or a um, Ainsley Maitland-Niles coping one on one with that threat. Whereas I think if you had the back of a, of a Chambers or a Monreal on either side, you can cope with that a little bit better. So yes, that means playing Kalasnak as well, but at least. Kalasinak doesn't have to focus so much on defending because he has Monreal backing him up. So I think that's how you need to double up on those wings is essentially what I'm saying. And I think the five is the way to do that. Fuck it out. I'm going overtime, overtime, overtime. You and Lee always got cringe uh, thumbnails for your life. Big up yourself, though. <laughs> but Ghost, here's the thing. I, br I do that to draw you in. Unlike Lee, though, I changed mine. <laughs> Lee will stay like this. <laughs> I crack up every time I see Lee's thumbnail. Like, motherfucker, you don't do that. Oh, shit. I love him. I love him. I love him. Forget the hate you guys. Uh, Pepe should do 50 to 60 minutes. Yeah, I'd give him an hour. Uh, Pepe looks like a serious guy, never smiles. I, I'm cool with that, STG. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I actually like that about him. He's a little bit different to an Aubameyang and a Lacazette, and he actually has come here to work, you know? I like that. But I'll tell you what, you say that, there was a nice little touch when um, I think Aubameyang scored, and uh, it's on Instagram. There's this video, there's a quick shot of Pepe celebrating from the sidelines, like, like doing that to, I think it's Lacazette. I think it's Lacazette. Because it's the first half, of course, and Pepe came on with the saga. So he's doing that to Lacazette as if he enjoyed the goal. So, yeah. Be Chambers, Socrates, Louise, won it, won it as the back three? Oh, that's the question, Adam. That's the question. I won't spoil it until Thursday. I'll let you know on Thursday. Nacho can't play centre-back. Okay, Adam. Uh, Nacho's too weak in the air to play centre-back. Okay. It's too... It's too MN, Chig. Okay. All right, guys. I've done overtime on overtime on overtime. Please do stick a like on this video. Almost 70 people watching. Thank you so much for sticking with me through my rant. Uh, and my apparent lagging, I don't know where that's come from. I'm going to have to look into this situation because it's pissing me off. Uh, but anyway, please do comment on this video if you're watching this on the playback. If you're new here, 
please do subscribe. Like I said, I'm going to be active this week. So Thursday, I'm coming back with a preview. Friday, some geezer called Pastor Chig wants to make an appearance on Friday. Saturday, uh, I will be doing my preview, my starting 11 video, then hopping on Lee's channel, doing a watch along, coming back on here, doing a player ratings with Lee. Then on Sunday is my day of rest. Gosh, even God chilled on a Sunday. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad I will. So yes. And then I can enjoy my annual leave bank holiday all wrapped up into one, baby. So, yes, um, I'll be back. I'm going to be active this week, so do enjoy. I'm out of here for now, though. Take care. Enjoy your evening. Peace.